Hi guys, welcome back. This is part 4 of the automatic temperature control project with peak microcontroller. In part 1 in tutorial 11, we designed the circuit diagram. In part 2, we started with the code to prompt the user to enter the reference temperature. In part 3, we continued with the code to measure the temperature and compare it with the reference temperature to control either the heater or the fan depending on the measured temperature. In this part 4, we're gonna add some more features on this project from the tutorials we have covered so far. We're gonna write some code to access the setup menu not only on startup but also while the project is running. We're gonna save the reference temperature in peak EEPROM. We're gonna sound a buzzer when the temperature reaches a critical value, we're going to also see some other features that we could add to improve this project. And finally, we're going to design the PC board of this project and show you where you can manufacture cheap quality PC board. Let us run the project and see where we left off in part 3. We can set your reference temperature. We're going to set it to 27. Press H to continue. If the reference temperature is higher than the current temperature, the heater will be switched on and the fan will be switched off. And when the actual temperature is higher than the reference temperature, then the fan will be switched on and the heater will be switched off. The first problem you can only access this setup menu on startup. If you need to set a new reference temperature, you'll have to restart your project. To resolve this, we're gonna write some code. When you press and hold the star key for 3 seconds, it's gonna prompt you to set a new reference temperature again. In while one loop, we're gonna read the keypad and check if the star key is pressed. We're gonna use the keypad key press routine instead of the keypad key click routine because the keypad key click is a blocking call. It waits until a key is pressed and then released. If the star key is pressed, we define the star key as clear. After 3 seconds, we're gonna check again if the key is still pressed. Then we're gonna go to start to prompt the user to enter a new reference temperature. The use of go to statement is generally discouraged as practically Every algorithm can be realized without it, resulting in legible structured programs. We are just using them for simplicity and to change as little as possible our existing code. But there might be other better ways to achieve this. To make the keypad respond as soon as a key is pressed, we're gonna remove this 10 second waiting period you could also use external interrupt to achieve this, but for simplicity, we're not going to use interrupt. Now, once we have set the reference temperature, we need to store it in peak EEPROM. This is a non-volatile memory so that whenever we start this device, we don't have to enter again this same reference temperature. We can only change it when we need a new one. An external EEPROM can also be used but for this application, we only need a few bytes of data. An internal EEPROM should be more than enough for this application. As we have learned in the reading and writing to pick internal EEPROM tutorial, it's straightforward with micro C. We only need to use two functions. The EEPROM read to read data from a specified address. For pick 16 f family, this address is of short type. And for PIC18 family, it is of integer type. The EEPROM writes data to a specified address. Before we set our reference temperature, we're gonna start reading first from the EEPROM to check if we've got a safe reference temperature value. We're gonna change this tempref variable data type from short to int. We're gonna read data from the EEPROM address too. You can use any address. We picked randomly this address and store this number in tempref variable. If there is some data, 
then we're gonna go straight to the main program go to start program and if there is no saved failure then we're gonna set a new reference temperature this is where our main program start and lastly after setting a new reference temperature we'll store it in eprom eprom write tempref at address 2 the same address that we are reading from We're gonna build the semicolon build again build successfully start our simulation before you simulate a EEPROM in Proteus, you must always make sure that you reset persistent model data. It says persistent model data is a model data like microprocessor EEPROM memory that ICES maintains between simulations. Confirm this option will force all models to revert to using their default memory settings. So this basically is going to clear all the values of EEPROMs that was saved previously. Click yes gonna run this is gonna be the first time so I should not expect anything in EPRO okay it prompt me to enter new reference temperature I'm gonna set it to 27 the fan is rotating can decrease the temperature okay, I can press and hold my star key so I can bring back the setup menu gonna enter a new reference temperature let's say 20 enter so the reference temperature is 20 I'm gonna stop the simulation and start it again start you can see it start it reads from the EEPROM and display the previous 20 degrees there are some other features that you can improve on this project. This is just the basics that you can use to build up on your project. In hardware design, the first thing we must never leave the unconnected pin floating because this can just be a good candidate for interference. Like this RB3 is not connected, we might get some random numbers on the keypad or some other malfunctions. If you never gonna use this pin, in your hardware design so the best idea is to connect it to ground and drive it low in the code but if you might need in the future to set it as an input so the best idea i think is always to use a pull down resistor so i'm gonna need another resistor And in code, I'm just going to drive this pin low. We're going to set RB3 as an output pin. Then we're going to drive it low. Run the simulation again. Everything should be the same. This shouldn't affect our code. Okay. Still working. So you can do the same for other unconnected pins. It's always a good practice never to leave pins floating. The other thing that we might consider in this design, as you can see, let us run the project again. Instead of having a fixed reference temperature, like in this case, we've got 30. If we increase the temperature to let's say 29, you can see now it's 29.3 if I just increase it it's gonna be 30.2 basically it's gonna be higher than 30 and the fan is gonna switch on but if the temperature decreases a little bit not even one degree then in theory it's gonna switch on the heater so this can make the project kind of oscillating so the best way I think is to have a minimum and maximum maybe you can have a range so if your temperature is still within that range not gonna change anything 
instead of switching on the heater just after 0.7 degrees i think it's it's better to have a range or to add an offset to a reference temperature you can say maybe you can compare if the reference temperature plus an offset value maybe of two degrees or five degrees then you can decide whether to switch on or off so that can bring some stability to this design there may be some other features that you can add on this project let us add a small piezo buzzer to sound when the temperature reaches a certain critical value. This is a small buzzer that consumes less than 10 milliamp. We're gonna connect it to RD2. We can also add a red LED to blink as well when this temperature is reached. We're going to connect this LED to RD3. We're gonna set RD3 as an output pin. Then we're gonna initialize RD2 for playing sound. Then in the while one loop, we could set this critical temperature up a point or even lower point in the setup menu after setting up the reference temperature and store this value in EEPROM the procedure is basically the same so we're not gonna repeat it again to simplify things we're just gonna pick a fixed value we're gonna pick 40 so if the actual temperature is greater or equals to 40 degrees celsius then we're gonna play a sound at 880 hertz for 300 millisecond Then we're gonna blink the LED. Then if the temperature is less than 40, we're gonna turn off the LED. We're gonna define port DR3 as LED. Let's build the code. Successful, run. So if the temperature is 40 or higher, the buzzer is gonna make sound and the LED is gonna blink. anything below and the buzzer is gonna be silent and the led is gonna be off that's all we could cover in this project at the moment next let's see how we can build a pc board for this project this is our schematic in eagle schematic editor we are using connectors to connect externally the keypad a 5 volt regulated power supply to power our board and the buzzer switch to board layout view we routed the board on two layers the top layer in red and the bottom ground plane in blue this is how the pc board is gonna look like this is the bottom side and this is the top side What is left now is to generate the GEBA files that you can send to your favorite PC board manufacturing house. Our favorite is PCBWay. They produce excellent PC board at cheap price. PCBWay is a China-based manufacturer specializing in PC board prototyping, small volume production, and PC board assembly service all under one roof with more than a decade of experience. They offer quick turnaround PC board at a very budgetary price. For 10 PC board, 
they're gonna charge you five US dollar and for one up to ten PC board assembly they're gonna charge you 88 US dollar. To order from PCB way is super easy. You can do everything online. All you need to do is specify the dimension of your board, specify the quantity, select the layer and the thickness, click coat now. You can now specify some other few parameters, then click calculate, click on add to cart, upload the GEPA files, and that's all. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to receive more tutorials. Please don't forget to like this video, to share it, and to leave your comment. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.